So these um, features you see are the rumples and they appear twice as big as they normally would just because of refraction due to different air densities. <laughs> yeah, is that right? That's about right, yeah. Nice. I explained it without actually calling it the name it is. <laughs> a mirage. It's called a mirage. I completely forgot the name, but um, yeah, a mirage occurs from two different air densities sitting on top of each other. And where they meet, it forms a boundary layer. And if the photons come at the right angle, it can undergo something called total internal reflection, which basically looks like a reflection at a certain angle. So the rumples appear twice as big and they have this characteristic reflected look. Special. It's pretty much solar midnight at the moment. Tell me why you're so freaking cold. <laughs> <laughs> We're currently heading off to service an LOH site and we've been driving for about an hour and a half. Driving can get really, really tiring. So, Ollie fell asleep, I shortly went after, and then Taff woke us up about 15 minutes later, being like, What are you guys doing? And it was actually a very nice nap. Weight is a really important factor to consider when travelling across the ice shelf. And for that reason, we can't take a lot of equipment with us. When we find a problem, we have to do a lot of MacGyvering to solve it. For example, I found this broken connector and I only had epoxy, so I had to epoxy it back together. But I put it in the logs and next year they'll come down with a new connector and repair it. Okay, this sun cream application is a bit excessive. I think it got too excited. There's a hole in the ozone and you get double the UV radiation from the snow reflecting upwards, so we have to apply lots of sun cream. It doesn't help that the sun cream is quite old and a bit gloopy and thick. So we finished at the LOH site and we're heading to pick up the dog cages now. Um, the dog cages were dug up last week. If you haven't seen that vlog, check it out. It's quite cool. Lots of drone footage, lots of cool cinematography stuff. And then we're going to drive all the way up the crack to the tip and reinstall them. The dog cages are just a giant reflector for a radar system. And the radar sends a chirp across and using the, the time taken for the chirp to come back, we can measure how quickly the crack is growing to the nearest millimeter. Glaciologist. I'm studying this beast so things only fair you get to poke it. <laughs> wait, wait, say that. Let's put this in perspective for you. We're looking down a 250 meter deep chasm to the bottom of the ocean. The average thickness of this ice is 200 meters and it's 1500 square kilometers big. That's twice the size of New York City. That means there's 300 billion cubic meters of ice in this ice shelf. The density of ice is 0.91 tons per cubic meter, which means there's 273 billion tons of ice in this ice shelf. That means this iceberg weighs 864 times more than the entire human population of the Earth. That's insane. Think of the tidal forces and the wind pressure pushing on the crack. And all that's holding on is 2.5 kilometers of ice and an underwater mountain that's pinning it. The forces are tremendous and we're stepping over this crack like it's nothing. Now don't quote me on these numbers. These are just some back of the envelope calculations I did while trying to wait out a blizzard. This is called the ground penetrating radar. It's a radar that looks for crevasses underneath the surface of the snow. Before we set foot on the ice shelf, we tend to go over the ground with this to make sure there are no hidden crevasses. Then we rope up to make sure we're extra safe. It's dragged behind one of the schema bills and it consists of a transmitter which transmits a pulse underneath the surface and then a receiver which then receives it and sends data to this computer. And there's a GPS tracker as well so we can track where we are look at the data, make sure that it's safe and also record it for scientific purposes and then we can actually go check it out with our eyes. The GPR sledge only needs two schema beals to take it out so Ollie and Taff have left me back at base to pack up. Once dog cages are installed we'll be heading back to base and I cannot wait because then we can have coffee and tea on demand and I can have a shower. 
but until then I'm gonna pack up and then I'm gonna find this hidden store where Taff seems to find chocolates. I know he's got chocolates hidden somewhere in the tent and why he's not here I'm gonna find them. Cool. Sledge packed. Uh, the others are still GPRing. I thought it might be a good idea to give you some insight into what what's actually going on down here. So this is the ice shelf. Can you see it? I'm not sure it's quite orange. This is where Halley is up here. This is where the coast is along here. This is where you get ships come in to restock and resupply Halley. Um, this is the chasm. This line that's going up is a big crack, and all of this is about to break off and um, become an iceberg. So this is the Rumples. As the ice sheet hits this underwater mountain, it's grounding here, so it's forming all this kind of rippling waves that's going back. And um, the ice sheet is cracking from here up. And so when these two meet, when this crack meets the cracks from here, this whole sheet is just gonna break off. And Halley, which is up here, needs to get to here to um to do relief to get to the ship so at the moment their gpr in this area here so they're using ground penetrating radar to see how far this crack actually goes and whether we can drive heavy vehicles to the coast to do relief our job is each of these points here are called loh sites now um what they are they're really accurate gps's down to i think the the centimeter but every year they get buried under a lot of snow so we need to go out to them dig them back to the surface realign the antennas if they've gone slightly awry i'll explain better at a later date with a nicer looking map but that's a rough idea of what we're doing um i've finished packing the sledge so i'm just going to listen to some chews put on some tea while they're outside in the minus 10 minus 25 wind chill winds and freezing their face off. <laughs> you got a good deal out of this. It's our final day on our field expedition. So we're installing the dog cages and the radar system on either side of the crack tip. We've been working for 14 days now and with only two days rest at camp. So we're all pretty tired, pretty run ragged. And flight control knew this. So they sent a flyby for us. This plane is headed for Rothera. It's only about 20 kilometers away. So it's nothing uh, for them to do a little detour and fly by. And so they decided to boost our morale by scaring the shit out of us. Um, <laughs> no, it was really nice. It's the first thing I've seen that is an Ollie and Taff and that was a godsend. So thanks for that flight control. In this shot you can clearly see how we set out the instrument. It's orthogonal to the crack tip, so it's going to be firing right across the crack and then the reflection is going to be received and we can really accurately measure the crack growth. Um, when the iceberg does carve, the dog cage will slip into the sea and rust and hopefully we'll be able to come back and claim our other equipment. So this is the receiver and this is the transmitter. Transmitter bounces a burst off the dog cage into the receiver. An update is sent to where Ollie is, the computer, which is powered by the solar panel on the wind turbine. Is that what it means? So you can see the reflection from the dog cage. 
Ja. Ja. This is the reflection from the ice shelf base. So the ice shelf where we've got it um, is about 30 meters thinner than it was where we dug it up from. Amazing. The reflection from the base is actually very strong here. Base of the ice shelf? From the base of the ice shelf, yeah. So even though the antennas are pointing up horizontal because they've got such a wide beam. But that distance would be the hypotenuse of the triangle, so it's slightly longer than what it would be straight down. Yeah, so, that, so you, you probably couldn't accurately say that That's the, the ice shelf was 200 meters thick. But a little bit of a, if you know the beam width, you can use some trig to work out there. Yeah. Ah, oh, this is so cool. This makes me really happy. <laughs> but because they had their antennas set up horizontal as well, um, you know, the ice shelf is thinner because they would have seen the exact same yeah. kind of angles for their base. Yeah. Here you can see the comparison from yesterday and today, which you can already see a growth, which is crazy. And then from last year, which is just insane. That was the size that we are looking at now last year. Hello, this is uh, Sledge Mike. How are you? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, do you know if we can test, or any method to test the iridium of the apiris? Well, let me just go to get Ollie. 